Hey, Jonathan here at Colfax Math. Today I'm going to go over the least common multiple, adding fractions, and greatest common factor. I'm doing a quick review of Chapter 3 in Course 1 of CPM. Uh, that is a 6th grade math class, but I just want to go over these three pretty big ideas today to review them before you go back to school in the fall. So let's first start with the least common multiple. There are three words there. Least, that's an easy one. That means the smallest one. Common, so I'm going to be comparing two different multiples between different numbers. So whichever one they have in common. And multiples, if I multiply a number by itself, then that's a multiple. So the least common multiple is really useful and kind of key in figuring out how to add fractions together. So understanding least common multiples will help you to be able to add fractions. Adding fractions is really big skill. And then we'll talk about greatest common factors next. So let's look at two different numbers. Let's say the number 4 and the number 6. And let's say the problem is, what is the least common multiple before those, for those two numbers? So what is the LCM for 4 and 6? Well, let's break it down into steps and pieces. So let's find the multiples of 4. So the multiples of 4 are 4 times 1, 4 times 2, 4 times 3, 4 times 4, 4 times 5, 4 times 6, 4 times 7 would be 28. So those are the multiples of 4, and it goes on infinitely. It's a series that will never end. I could think of it as an arithmetic sequence, as adding things, by going 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 4 is 12, plus 4 is 16, plus 4 is 20, plus 4. Or a geometric, which is multiplying 4 times 2, 4 times 3, 4 times 4. So these are the multiples of 4, and it'll keep going. Now i got to find what's common between these and the multiples of 6. So let's write out the multiples of 6. So 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3. Whoops, six. it's hard to say something and write something different. 6 times 3 is 18, 6 times 4, 6 times 5, 6 times 6, and that keeps going, so it's a series that keeps going. So I found the multiples of 4, I found the multiples of 6, now I'm going to look at the one that they have in common. So what's in common here, a 12 and a 12, they both have 12s. What else? They both have 24s. And if I kept the series going, I'd find other common multiples in these two numbers. And now I'm looking for the least common multiple. So I look for the smallest one, which is 12. So 12 is the least common multiple of 4 and 6. Okay? So why is that important? Well, let's say I'm adding fractions together. And I want to add the fraction. Let's say I want to add the fraction 3 fourths plus 5 6. So when you add fractions together, when you add or subtract fractions, you have to have a common denominator. So that's kind of the most important piece. These are not common denominators. So you have to figure out what would be the common denominator. Well, we found the least common multiple of 4 and 6 already. We said that was equal to 12. So that's going to be our common denominator. So i got to turn this into a 12 in the bottom. I can multiply by 1 so as not to affect the value. But if I multiply by anything else besides 1, it would change the value of it. So the way I'm going to make this into a 12 on the bottom is I'm going to multiply it by 3 over 3. 3 over 3 is the equivalent of 1. Can you see that? Change that cost it with black. I'm going to multiply it by 3 over 3. That's the equivalent of 1, so it doesn't change the value of it. I multiply across the top to get 9, across the bottom to get 12. And then now I've got to make this a 12 by multiplying by 1. So I'm going to make that 2 over 2. That's equal to 1, doesn't change the value of it. So I multiply across the top to get 10, across the bottom to get 12. 
So we said our least common multiple of 4 and 6 was 12. I know that's where I need to go in the bottom here to get a 12 here. To get a 12 with this 6, I multiply by a 2. I can't just multiply by a 2 because that'll change the value. So I multiply by 2 over 2, which is equivalent to 1, doesn't affect the value of it, and that gives me 10 12s. Over here, I need a 12 in the denominator. So I have to multiply this 4 by what to get 12? Well, that'd be a 3. If I multiply by a 3, it change the value. So I multiply by a 3 over a 3, which is equal to 1, and that gives me 9 twelfths. Now that I have a common multiple, I just add across the top to get 9 plus 10, 19, and that is over the common denominator of 12. So that's your answer, 19 twelfths. Can it be reduced? It can't be reduced because I used the least common multiple. If I had used another number, another multiple that wasn't the least common multiple between the four and the six, then I could have re reduced it. I can turn it into a mixed number by saying 12 goes into 19 one time with seven left over. So 12 goes into 19 one time with seven left over, or 19 twelfths is the equivalent of one and seven twelfths. Okay, so again, a least common multiple is the way you figure that out is you find all the multiples of a number. For four, it'd be four, eight, 12, 16. You do that for the other number. You circle the like, multiples that are common. In this case, it was 12 and then 24. And then you look at the smallest common multiple. So that's the least common multiple. The way you add fractions again, you have to have a common denominator. The bottom number has to be the same. Once you have that common denominator, you add across the top and keep that bottom denominator. And they're pretty well tied together because the way you figure out that common denominator is by using the least common multiple. And then lastly, let me just say a couple of things about it. Greatest common factor. So if I'm looking at factors, those are not multiple. So a factor is just what makes up that number through multiplication. So let's say I had 24. Well, what, what are the factors of 24? I can set up a factor tree to figure that out. Factors of 24 are 24 and a 1, or a 12 and a 2. A 12 is made up of a 6 and a 2, or you could have set a 4 and a 3 either way. A 6 is made up of a 3 and a 2. So these should be the factors of 24. 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. Those numbers are non-factorable. I brought it all the way down to non-factoring numbers. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 2, 12. 12 times 2, 24. So those are the factors of 24. Let's say I want to find the greatest common factor between 24 and 36. So now I'm looking for the greatest common factor between two numbers, between 36 and 24. I'm going to find the factors of them, not the multiple, but the things that make it up through multiplication, um, and then figure out the greatest common one. So 36, I could do this a lot of ways. I could do a 6 and a 6, 18 and a 2, a 12 and a 3, uh, let's say an 18 and a 2, 18 is a 9 and a 2, and a 9 is a 3 and a 3. It wouldn't have mattered if I did a 6 and a 6. I did a 6 and a 6. Factors of 6 would be a 3 and a 2 and a 3 and a 2. The factors would stay the same. So now what are the greatest common factors in 36 and 24? I'm not looking for the smallest one. I'm looking for the greatest, greatest common factor. So what numbers will go into both of these? The biggest number that will go into both of these. Uh, 2 will go into both. 3 will go into both. A 9 will not, a 6 will go into both, but a 12 will go into both as well, right? 12 times 2 is 24, and even though I don't have a 12 here, I could get a 12 by going 3 times 2 times 2, right? 3 times 2 6 times 2 is 12. So the greatest common factor in 36 and 24 would be a 12. All right, well, hopefully that explained what a least common multiple is why it's so important for adding fractions together, and what a greatest common factor is. They are seem kind of complex anytime you use um, acronyms, which is a letter to represent a word. It gets complicated, but if you break it down into little pieces, they're not so bad. So think of this, M 
That's for multiple. That means 5, 10, 15, 20. Common. So I'm looking for multiples in two different numbers and then the smallest one. So that's the least common multiple. Versus a factor, like what is a factor of 100? Well, that could be uh, 100. The factors of 100, you would set up a factor tree to get, say, 50 and a 2, a 25 and a 2, and a 5 and a 5. So the factors of 100, factors of 100 would be 5 and a 5 and a 2 and a 2. The greatest common factor, I'd have to compare it to another number, say. Um, so let's say, actually, let me just do... Let's say 80. So what are the greatest common factors between 180? Well, let's say this is, I don't know, a 20 and a 4. I could have said an 8 and a 10. A 40 and a 2, doesn't matter. 20 is a 5 and a 4. A 4 is a 2 and a 2. 4 is a 2 and a 2. So the factors of 80 are a 5, 2, and a 2, and a 2, and a 2. So which is the biggest number that would go into both of these? which is the biggest factor that would go into both of them. And I can see I have a 20 that would work here, and a five times a two, 10 times a two, a 20 would work there. 25 is too big. So the greatest common factor between 80 and 100 would be a 20. All right, hopefully that helped. Uh, this is Jonathan at Colfax Math signing out from CPM Course 1, Chapter 3, explaining what the LCM and GCF is. And I'm hoping that helped. So if you like the video, hit like and subscribe for more All Things Math. Thank you for watching.